go home and study it. For a long time, prior to 66 trillion years ago, you have it in your writings at home from Namaj Muhammad that the scientists wrote history in the last 35,000 years, right? 35 men, 35,000 years. How far back? At least 10 trillion years. At least 10 trillion. A trillion is a lot of years. Huh? A trillion. A trillion is a million billion. That's like saying, blah, blah, blah. 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 It's so long, it doesn't mean nothing to us, right? Okay. But it took him six trillion years to produce a writer from himself. Now, how long it took that writing and all that to, to develop, I don't know. But, but if it took a million years, I mean, when you look at, look at inside of a trillion, 100,000 years is a long time. Two, three hundred thousand, a million years, two million years. Stop and look inside of all of this. What were we doing back then? Were we smart? Hmm? Well, we can hardly conceive of that. We wasn't stupid, though. Now, if you got brothers out there making stars, they're not stupid. That's a hell of a lot more than a building, isn't it? Yes, what kind of mother do you have to be? What are you putting in a child to produce stars? Listen to that. Hmm? I mean, come on. I mean, think on this. What kind of male-female relationship do you think they had? It must have been tight. To have that kind of productivity, I don't know what we built on earth, but it had to be bad if we had brothers thinking up stars that were so confident they could go ahead and just die and know the thing is coming over a period of trillions of years. Why, why do we even do that? Well, that's an aspect of this message we're not even getting into yet. That comes later on. Hmm? Okay, now, all of a sudden, lights out. Boom. You blew off part of the planet. You know about that, right? Yes, sir. I would need in detail that. Now, here's what you may not have been thinking about. Here you have the planet blown off. Now, I want you to think. Use your imagination, but use it intelligently. Suppose you was around at that time. The Earth is spinning on its own axis, right? It took six years for the water on that part to fall on this part. That part blew out, went so far, and stopped and began rotating around this piece for 66 trillion years. Was that a disruptive point in time in the life of our, of our people? Was it? Go turn a globe around and look where the globe has almost all water, the Pacific Ocean. That was a rough set, wasn't it? You don't think about it too much, do you? Why are we even told that? Everything up to this point that we were taught so far, active will of God, active will of God, permitted. He allowed that to happen. This part dropped 36,000 uh, miles in, in, in its orbit. He said that if you were on the, on the side of the earth that didn't get blown off, you wouldn't even have known it happened. But what about if your part is turning around and all this water is coming down? Huh? That's a lot of water. Six years. It wasn't just dirt and earth blown out. Moon, water was blown out. Now here you got this water and maybe particles coming back. Was that an interesting time? Yes, sir. Big time, wasn't it? Yes, sir. Well, look, the time we're in right now is equal to that time, even bigger, in terms of disruption. So you don't have to have heart attacks. One thing the Muslims should be carrying, we, we have a lot of stress on us. But a lot of our stress is stress we bring on ourselves by having this gorgeous, big, juicy teaching and messing over it. Stepping all in it, like doo-doo in the street. Yes, sir. You would not allow a knock on your door, 12 midnight, a white man and a white woman. I'm using them to make a point. I'm not downing white folks. They knock on your door. They tell you they want to come in your house and commit the sex acts right in your living room. And they say, oh, we're bringing Fido in with us. Yet, some of us turn on our TV, and we invite them right in our house. You flipping channels, stick to the news. Stick to A&E, &E, TLC, or the History Channel. Or turn the damn thing off and read the Holy Quran. 
or run around the block 50 times if it's not too cold. Follow me? They are trying to take us out of here. You don't... Look, some of you are deep enough in certain fields. I can't get into this like I'd love to. But there are a lot of white folks whose names we hardly know who are advertising geniuses. There. Some of them lived last century, some of them are dead, some of them are still alive. But they sit up and they concoct stuff. And they drop it down and it gets down to lower levels of white folks that it hits us. Maybe in a corporation, the idea is coming down. You don't know who even thought it up and what their purpose was. What they're trying to do is take us to hell, man. The strongest man potentially in the universe is this brother. Samson, Samson, like the sun. Some of you older brothers, you know the white man used to call you Sam. You know, you can bear me witness. Sam, some of you older brothers, you can tell the younger brothers, they used to call you Sam, Sam. He didn't say Samson, meaning like the sun. Deeper meaning the sun is like you. The high, white shriners, they know it. Some of you brothers, I used to shine shoes. They say those kind of words. Go get some of the older brothers and talk with them. Find out what did the white boy have in mind. Some of you sisters or the uh, older sisters or the sisters may have died recently or whatever. They can tell you that some of them old white women in their 70s and 80s would tell the sister about the future of your people. You may find one in here who can bear me witness to this. But as time goes along, you forget about what happened yesterday. You don't get the lessons of what happened. And you think this craft is new. Now all of a sudden now, got these crazy stupid looking shoes, harking back to a little bit of the 70s. These haven't put the afros on. Look how now, it's no big deal wearing a beard. In the 60s, you look like a shaggy dog. So now you trim your beard and work, work now. And notice, notice, I mean, notice this thing. They're running high game on us. They got so-called fashion. It's not fashionable to walk around naked. When the black man gets his act together, sister, you never have to worry about him looking at the act with them scallywag. You never have to worry about that. Because you see deeper. See, that's the shape that they're doing you with, brother, the shape. Stop and look beyond the shape to the motive and the spirit. Then you see death. Some of these movies they got out, the monster may be a beautiful woman clothing a monster. And then every now and then the monster is shown. They're telling you and I have something straight to our faces. They are so damn sophisticated now. And there's so many ignorant Muslims in the nation who don't know the big drama. And you think the war's over. And you think the minister that made some changes. He ain't making no changes. He's being used to operate on, high, on a higher level than they are. That you missed the damn point. What led to the press conference? If, if and when you learn what really was behind the press conference, you'll almost bow down and cry for thinking crazy about the minister. Come on, right here. He didn't ask for those people to be out there that day. You don't even know what led to that. Come on, tell well, I'm not going to do it now. Right. can't do it now. But I'm just saying that you don't trust him, but you trust white folks? Yeah. The man brought the nation this far. All right. All right. All right. This way. Come on. That's right. That's you think he lied when he said he, he heard the Ahmad Muhammad's voice? Every major thing that's come since 85 came out of that experience. I don't have time to deal with that adequately, not today, a little bit, maybe tomorrow. But I just want to say we're making some dumb mistakes in the house, and in the process, we're killing the dead, keeping them in the grave. You go out with a stupid attitude, you're in the market, there's a 200 of your people, you ain't thinking about trying to save them, you're thinking about some petty grievance you got. Come on, talk. Yes, sir. And the white man running high circle, high games on us. In fact, let me digress a bit. Since I'm on that. Thank you. Yeah, this came out of one of these old ancient study guides that I used to do a long time ago. Thank you. And in it, uh, there's a section here called <clears throat> This appeared 21 points of a book that, that Haki Makbudi wrote called Enemies. Clash of Races, page 133 through 134. Says, Brother Akbar sent this up. We've changed a few words in the place where Haki dealt with institution. We've used it, the word temple or nation. And we thought
thank him for what Hockey de describes as, quote, a few tactics used by the conscious and unconscious brother and sister to bring about the death of black institutions and organizations. One, don't have an accurate understanding of the nation's program and objectives. Do not attend briefing sessions and therefore find yourself unable to push the programs of the nation. Two, don't attend staff meetings. If you do attend, come on your own time and leave when you get ready, even if it's in the middle of the meeting, and never bring a guest. Three, never offer constructive criticism, advice or criticism to the temple, and if you have anything negative to say, say it on the outside where it can be heard only by the enemies of the nation. Four, when a decision is made by the officials, go home and talk bad about the decision and do nothing unless it, unless, unless it is in opposition to the, officials, to the officials' decision. Five, upon becoming a part of a nation, always push your personality and program and refuse to adapt to the programs and position of the nation. Six, always find fault with people in positions of responsibility and do not discuss it with them, but go to the enemies outside of, with your criticism. Seven, be as inactive as possible while always talking about what the temple is not doing and what it is supposed to be doing. Eight, if asked about your inactivity, space on the question and talk about the inactivity of others to cover yourself. Nine, while attending a meeting, always sit in the back of the room or, or on the outside where you can talk while the minister is teaching, and sometimes laborers do that too. You're so damn busy. You, you can't sit in with, because I already know that. Some laborers do that around the country. And may I add something that's not here, but I'm going to finish this list in a minute. Labors are no better than, than so-called common believers. We're all the same. We all are the same. But you have no right, unless you want to destroy this or work to destroy it, to pull down a labor. You should never make a brother or sister feel bad because they occupy in a position of responsibility. How about encouragement? On the other hand, labor should never be the big eye. Therefore, you are the little you. Huh? Ahmad Muhammad told me one time about some labors in a certain city. He said, brother, you may mistreat one of my followers and get by me, but you will not get by Allah. He told me that to pass it on to certain people, and I did. They didn't like it, but I said, well, that's what he said. Anyway, <laughs> get all the benefits the nation can give, but give nothing back. This will surely limit the growth of the nation. Always try to talk more, take more than you put in. 11, talk cooperation, never cooperate. Eat, but never bring food. Twelve, never push the nation. Always push yourself at the expense of the nation and its program. Thirteen, never bring new people. I was in one city, and I asked as politely as I could. It wasn't personal. I didn't know nobody there on a personal basis. When's the last time you, how many debt have you bought in the past year? Some people bought none. Two, eight, twelve. Horrible. How many meetings did we have? Is that touching somebody in this room? Say amen. amen. Thank you. Make you feel a little better about it. Take a little pressure off your head. Never bring new people. Talk about organizing, but don't organize. If you can't get it your way, threaten to stay home and push to see that others stay home with you. All right. uh, obey chapter 9 of the Holy Quran, where it says the hypocrites stay home and encourage others to do so. 50. Never fulfill obligations of asked to help. Never have time when asked to take an assignment. Half do it. 16. Never become an officer if, he, if elected. Because it's easier to badmouth and talk about the irresponsibility of others than it is to assume responsibility in direct projects yourself. 17. Have the attitude that nothing is as important as your theories and ideas, even if they have been proven unworkable and conflict with the temple or our minister's goals. Some of us don't want to put it that plain. But, dot, 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 fill in the blanks. Hmm? When given an assignment, never follow through to completion. And when confronted with your shortcomings, act insulted as if somebody's questioning your commitment to the nation. 19. Seek leadership position, but don't work and don't study commensurate with the position yet that you seek so that you can be very unqualified and help to ruin the nation. Study just enough to become magnificently incompetent. Okay? Seek, okay, always maintain a negative attitude toward the nation as well as the members of the nation. In fact, make negativism your program. Last, never offer anything constructive in the development of the nation's program, but be highly critical of what everybody else offers. That's an interesting statement. 
What? It don't fit nobody in this room, does it? Let's go back to the beginning. Now, he, his study of himself was motivated by the highest kind of love. She was in him. She, he loved himself. So he created her, her out of his love for himself, which was the love of her as she was part of himself. She could not help but love him, for it was from love that he created her. The process of all of the steps involved by which he created her were characterized or permeated by this process which was generated by his love. That love was the basis of the natural and heavenly state between them down on into the trillions of years. Now we're in the fallen state. However, sooner than most think it'll be heaven again on earth and better than ever throughout the entire range of the interrelatedness of the male and female relationships, even now, that basis is being laid deeper and better than it ever could by Master Farad Muhammad. Look again and deeper into what Minister Farrakhan has taught about why God hates divorce. Look again and deeper into what he has taught about marriage. First, this first man was aware of his state after his own creation. Then he was wise enough to study to improve his state. Through this intense and thorough study, he generated an increase of his self-knowledge. Then came the exercise of further wisdom to determine the process by which he would create her. Again, this first study was mathematical theology. As a study of the human being, both male and female, reveals mathematics, which is infinitely beyond the mathematics generated by this world's best thinkers. To think that Master Karl Muhammad stepped down in this, into this hell with us to share this and more in the manner that he did. Mm. We're still very blessed today to be given even the slightest insight into the nature of the origin of everything, including God, which gives us his insight into every reality on down into today. Now, you find that interesting? Why shouldn't you? Isn't that, isn't that a serious subject or area of, of thought and study? Huh? Doesn't it involve us in a very intimate way? Doesn't it? Yes, sir. Now, so now you got that first part of the history. Now again, of course, we can't draw this to scale. Sixty-six trillion years, we're told nothing about that, are we? All we're told is, Black people on this earth produce big stuff, but we're given no details. Now look, all of what we did during, six, during 66 trillion years we did, despite the fact that the vast majority of us did not know God was a man. It had been from that, we're at the end of this 66 trillion year period. Let's think about this. The majority of the people that born, grew up, came wise and died. The majority of human beings that have ever lived on this earth died not knowing the ultimate reality of God. Now it's being revealed to, to us black people who are in the worst and the most wretched condition of any black people who ever lived. For we have been living, especially over the last 400 years, in subjection to the worst element in ourselves. Hmm? Got that? So now, this is a long time, isn't it? Now, can I erase this? I, I don't think I can do this double board thing like, like I want. I'm gonna, you got it all clear now, so far? Huh? Yes or no? Sixty-six trillion years. Long time, is it? Now, we do it like this. Let's say that's all on this imaginary board over here, what I've just read. Here we are now. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, six. Now, these, these represent. 25,000 year period. Did not you read that the 
Honorable Elijah Muhammad said that Master Farah Muhammad knew 150,000 years of history by Allah. Now look, he taught us that his teacher, in the course of explaining to him himself, to him, this is one on one, made him to know that at the age of four, his father took him into the vaults that are there in Mecca. That's where these scripts of, of Quran's exist. I don't know how long, how they're written. I don't know those details. I don't know nothing about that. I heard a few things from his mouth, but I was too stupid to ask all the questions. I could have, so I blew that opportunity. Now, here's what I would like you to see. this the year one. And let's say from this point, 15,085 years ago, am I right? Hmm? 1914 to now is how many years? 86? Am I right? But 86 years past the 6,000 years given to Satan. We're 15,086 years into or from the time when 24 men met in Mecca to write up the period of time that we're in now. Am I right? Yes, sir. Do you see this? Yes, sir. I want you to, I, if you don't understand what I'm saying, and I ask you, don't mess this up by saying you are with me and you're not. Because I wind up getting all the way into the thing and you don't get what I'm talking about. Look, 15. 86 is the same as 1914. I can't draw this to scale. Let me, let me make this a little wider. This is not the scale. Don't worry about this right now. Come back to this in a minute, okay? You know that once every 25,000 years, the scientists meet in Mecca. One calls the other 23 in, and they get up the future of the nation. You know that. If you don't, you have not read what you got in your house because you think it's irrelevant. They got nothing to do with me. They don't have nothing to do with my beans and my plate. Well, I got to make this money. I'm too busy to study. It don't take you but a few minutes to read this. huh? Otherwise, you're showing ingratitude. And as you show more and more ingratitude, your heart gets hardened to reality, the real world. The real world is not scuffling with white folks, drudging around and earn a few dollars that come and go real fast real world is what's being produced to you right now. Now, let's say this is now. The year 2000. Okay? Okay? This is, let's say, this, this, this is not the scale. 1955. Okay? Let's call this 1555. Okay? So we're 1555 to now is how many years? 500, 400 and how many? 445, right? Am I right? Yes, From 1555 to now is how many years? From 1555 to now is how many years? How much? 445. That's here, right? A lot has happened during this time? Let's say this is Muhammad. 1400 years ago, right? Or around the 600s. You got the revelation in the year 610. Is that right? Yes, sir. You already know that. <coughs> 610. Let's go back over here. Let's call this Jesus or Isa. That's roughly 2,000 years ago, right? Yes, sir. Right. See why I need a bigger board? But you got my point so far? Yes, sir. Stick with me. Yes, sir. If you don't have it, raise your hands and say stop. 2,000 years ago, Jesus, 2,000 years before that Moses, right? right. From then to now is what, 4,000 years? Right. Huh? 2,000 years, probably, yeah, before Moses is Yaku, right? right? Am I right? Yes, yes sir. <laughs> 2,000, rather, 2,000, roughly 600 years before Musa, Yaku. He's born, he goes to school, he begins making converts, he gets exiled, him and his people. 
to the Isle of Pilon, right? right? Or Patmos. Yes. Follow me? Yes, sir. Okay. This is Yaku. Now, this covers roughly 6,600 years, right? Yes, sir. Approximately. I'm not being exact because we don't have enough space here. But you got this so far? Yes, sir. Now, between Yaku and the, and the scientists who wrote up this, this time period we're in, it's 8,400 years, right? Yes, sir. Right. 8,400 years between the time the scientists were looking down into the future and the time they saw Yaku being born. Now, this, are you all with me? Yes, sir. If you're not, don't be shy. Raise your hand and say, I'm not with you. What part are you, are you missing? Okay. This is 19, this is the year 2000, right? This is right now. 445 years ago, they began kidnapping. John Hawkins. Right. That's right. Some years before that, in the year 610, Muhammad gets the revelation. 40 years before that, roughly, he was born. Right? Okay. 2,000 years from now, Roughly, Jesus was born and did his work. That's what they say, right? 2,000 years before that, Moses came, got the white folks out up off, off their all fours, correct? Out of the caves, right? 2,000 years before that, Yaqub was born, a little bit over that. 2,000 years before that, the white man was born. The first white babies, ah, here, here we are, get ready to do hell, came on the scene, right? Got that? 600 years before that, Yaqub was born. And he made white people. I'm running over this quickly, but did you see the picture? Yes, sir. Clear now, sister? You sure? Yes, sir. Now, before Yaqub was born, going back in time to the time when the, the gods met to write up this present cycle was 8,400 years. In other words, there's 8,400 years that we don't know nothing about that's longer than the amount of time white folks been here. Hmm. This is stuff you already should be able to see yourself. Work, you start thinking on what you got. Then you walk around and do the other things you got to do all day, and you're growing all day long while you're making money. But don't forget to teach you to go out making money, and you wind up a jackass year in and year out you as dumb as you was five, ten years ago. You ain't got nothing. You still ain't got no money. Got this so far? Yes, sir. It's clear now, sis. Is it clear now? Now, looking back from this point, now I can't write all of this because I don't have enough space. If I write everything I want to write right now, it'll be real messy. So follow me, and if, if you're not with me, stop and raise your hand. This ain't about no speech. This is about really communication on a deeper than just a speech level. You make a speech, people walk out there, forget half of what you say. Hmm? Now, from this point of view, looking backwards, 16,000 years ago, or 1,000 years before these scientists got together, we exiled the people called Indians. Right. Running around half naked using tobacco. <coughs> they got half time to America. Yes, sir. Got that so far? Yes, sir. Now, that's 24,000 years after the beginning of that previous cycle. I'm saying what you already is already in your information, but I'm saying a little different because you ain't been thinking. If you think on the word of God, you'll start growing. This teaching is not designed in the silly sense of the word to raise the dead. It's exactly what God knew that we had to know to get us on, on other levels, beyond where, beyond where you are, where we are when we first come into Mars. Now look, so that's, that's 16,000 years ago. Or... 24,000 years into the previous cycle. Right. These men got together. They read the previous Quran. The mother of the book. Okay? <coughs> the mother of the book is what's written every 25,000 years. The present Quran you got over there at home <coughs> tells you it comes from a larger book. That's right. That larger book is safe with us. Where is, where are the us here on this earth? Proof that Satan's trying to snatch a hearing. From who? From the gods. They try to use this, that's why I want to show you the CIA piece. To show you that there's power with the minister and with you way beyond their power. The white man is bad. But he ain't the supreme being. But he is bad. And it's in the saying that Muhammad, that Allah would 
produce some creatures on the earth that nobody could deal with but he himself. Can nobody deal with America but the supreme beings? For this cause have I raised the upright folks to show how that you get all bad as you want to get. To show that I'm God. If I crush you when you are eight man, our oh, people say you took advantage of it. No, I take one of you, one that you made an absolute fool out of Elijah Muhammad. I'll grow him up into my power and I'll put him in my place and I'll put Louis Farrakhan in your place to demonstrate my juice. Not to show how big I am, but I'm trying to share with you what I got. I'm God and I came to make you God and goddess. You're out of the nigger category. But you stay in the nigger category as long as you won't think. And argue and eat late. <laughs> now, they, these men here who saw all of this coming look back in time and they see this the Indians. Okay? You follow me so far? Now let me stop on this and take, say this. I don't know the exact year. I can't give you the exact year. But we know that Ahmad Muhammad said that Master Farah Muhammad showed him two stars a red. And a green, and what? Thank you, blue stuff. Every 50,000 years you see it. How far back does that take us? Now look, we just say sometime in the 1930s, I don't know the exact year. 50,000 years from this time, roughly, back to the beginning of this cycle is about 15,000 years, right? That's right, sir. Are you with that? Yes, sir. Now, add to that the previous 25,000 years, how much does that make? 40,000 years, right? Go back 10 more thousand years to Shabbat's. You got to go back. You got this Quran we're living through, the previous one, then the one before that. Please just, you know, if you don't get it, stop me. This is the year 15,000. Shabbat's. Shabbat's, as we've now learned, was the top of the 24. He was the supreme one, supreme man at that time. <laughs> now remember, this is not at the beginning of that cycle. It's 15,000 years into that cycle. 15,000 years into that cycle, meaning they got 10,000 more years to go. Hmm? You follow that so far? Yes, sir. No. 15, look, I'll say it again. 15,000 years takes us to the beginning of this cycle. 25,000 years the previous cycle takes us to 40,000 years. Then add 10,000 years before that, that makes 50,000 years ago, Shabbat. Got that? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah, of course, that's Shabbat, but he was a free being at that time. Yes, he was. Oh, see, because remember now, all the way through, you always have one over the others. Yes. 15,000 years earlier is where 24, 23 plus 1 did the writer, but they died. They produced children, okay? And on and on and on and on. And now you 15,000 years into this. The top being was our father, who, who we was in, so to speak. We wasn't born yet. He went into the jungles of East Asia. He wanted to make a tough man and a tough woman. We were kind of tender at that time. But he saw something coming. I want to take my time on that part, but I want to take it step by step so it's clear. I do not want to walk, if we don't, if we don't do nothing else for the next three hours, but this, that's cool with me. I'd rather be understood on what I say than just it, take for granted. That's clear so far, brother? Yes, sir. Clear. Okay, from here to here. Now, 50,000 years. Okay? Now, Buddhism started when? 35,000 years ago. Now, you got 15,000 plus this previous 25,000 makes 45. So that means 5,000 years into the previous mother of the books. Buddhism popped up. Meaning 15,000 years after Shabbat. 15,000 years after Shabbat, or 5,000 years into the previous cycle. Here come Buddhism. Uh-oh, that's a bad fella popping up. Now, 19,000 years later, got so bad we had to chase him up now. 
19,000 years later or 16,000 years ago. Clear so far? Yes, sir. What is this? This is still on the surface. Don't say it's heavy. It's right on the surface, but you've just been frozen around, walking around on nothing, honey. You caught him because you got about an eighth of a snow, eighth of an inch of snow. How about you smart? That's what happens in Arizona. They got about a, a jillionth of an inch of snow and it makes the front page. We heavy in, we got a snow flurry. <laughs> Please, man. Look on the TV, the people back there in Boston and Philly and New York City. Buffalo. Jesus Christ. 18, 20 inches of snow. And I always get to jam us back there. Don't complain when you out here, it's 115 <laughs> degrees selling the paper. Hey, you got brothers back on the East Coast popping the paper, man, when it's two right. and eight. And then the chill factor cut takes over and they push it. So now next summer when it's nice out here, you can talk about the brothers in Arizona who have got to be out there pushing when it's 150 and 170. Right. I remember in the 60s, we wanted to know if you could loosen up the uniform a little taste. <laughs> It'd be hot. <laughs> but we had to push anyway. Hey, but why not? You're not actually just pushing papers. You're, you're participating in the resurrection of the dead. If you look at it, not a matter of goddamn dollars, but you're raising the dead. If you look at it like that, you see it better and you have more energy. You see this now? So far, are you clear on this? Now, this means if these changes are made, and I, I don't know all of this, I don't know what those changes were every 50,000 years. What did it mean? I don't know. Well, I, uh, but I, be I began to see a pattern. You had a cycle of 25,000 year histories, then I noticed, wow, every other koan, you had 50,000 years. See that? Look at it, just look at it. 10,000, probably 15,000, and 25,000 makes 40. The previous 10, going backwards, takes you to the year 15,000. 15 and 25 again make 40. Add on 10, what does that mean? I don't know. In that area, my knowledge runs out. I hit a wall. I can't tell you. I don't know. That's for the future study. When we graduate, but we got to first graduate out of kindergarten. And you can't graduate out of kindergarten. To come out of kindergarten, you have to be absolutely a black man, a black woman, not a nigga. Niggas ain't going to graduate. You got that? Niggas ain't going to graduate. What's an example of a nigga? You can't make Friday night meetings. You're too busy. I got to go to the movies. Talk, talk, talk. Made up by white people. I got to sit there and watch white folks. Come on. Or dumb niggas. Yeah. Talk. They may be beautiful and shapely, but they're dumb as hell. Right. You don't like that. Like it or not, you heard it. You got this so far? Nah, you know what this is about? This is about getting you to think. It's true. But it gets you to think. Now, we don't have a lot of details. The thing is, why were we told these things? It begins to change your frame of reference, doesn't it? That's right. right, right, right. And every now and then, you run up on some stuff that white folks admit. Oh, the niggas was here 14 billion years ago. We didn't write a test on these niggas' bones. These niggas are ancient. You know what they say? Yes, sir. I mean, think on it. But we, we, we are around playing with the surface of this. You ought to be careful what you're watching on the tube. It's a valuable instrument. Go and look at the TV guy to see if there's anything coming on that you can advance your mind. A lot of white folks also got every single week avalanche, a raging planet, the wrath of God. God killing us. God's killing us. God's killing us. Then he has UFOs. UFOs. They're smarter than us. They're coming to get us. It's the, end of the, it's the end of the world. You know what they're saying? Morning, noon, and night? Are you picking up on it? Don't waste time with those ignorant sitcoms. Don't waste your time. Forget it. It's not going to advance your mind to watch some dumb niggas get paid money to act like clowns. That's our people. That's madness. You're a Muslim and, a, and, and you were chosen by God to help straighten up our people. You wasn't born into this to, to be the same nigga you was before. You 
hear what I'm saying? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So an example of, of the same, same nigga as before is FOI brothers that mistreat sisters. <laughs> or the same as a sister that won't lose weight. You want to stay 500 pounds. You want to wallow in misery. Like, like that's your religion. My religion is Islam slash misery. <laughs> we got to come out of this stupidity. We've been given too, given too much. We didn't have to earn, we didn't earn this. You was just born, superficial. Deeper than that, you were willed into being. To grow up, each stage of your life, you got, you got service to render. As you grow, you grow into different levels of knowledge and understanding and skill. Right. You got something to give the cause. Right. Almost no mass are we organized the way we should be. Right. So we forgot who the hell we are. Right. But you heard it. Who's the, who, who's the original man? Me, me, y'all, y'all. That's it. Suppose you ever took the time to get you a dictionary. Come on. And look up every word in the student enrollment. You know something, you're gonna see something, you're gonna something. You know what right. you know I'm saying? Yes, sir. Damn, I love it. Yes, sir. That's right. You have no idea of the power of your brain. It's a small pump that I had examples when I first came to the nation. I love baseball, among other things. And I used to carry in my head on a daily basis. Every day, the changes that the ten top batters, uh, what their what their positions was every day. I change it every day as they change it in the paper. I carry around my head stuff that wasn't interesting, wasn't, wasn't worth a damn. You follow me? Instead of using it as a reference point, I was so fascinated by it I memorized. When they first began get, trying to get me to the mosque, I I saw the student in Roma by accident one day. I said, "Yo, gotta memorize all this." I was too stupid to see that I was carrying around all those details in my head and changing it on a daily basis. Useless information. You have no idea what your mind is like. Now, there are a few seminars I have run. I run them all day long, hardly no stop. But it seemed like you were only there a few minutes, if you're sufficiently interested. You haven't been here long. Some parts of this, you lose track of time. It's all about you, and you're interested in yourself. Yes, sir. Yeah. Now, Master Farah Muhammad memorized 150,000 years. I don't know. Is it these six go on 150,000 years? What about this 25,000 over here? I'm raised in this because I don't know. Maybe one of your wise ones know. You got some literature. In fact, about a lot of y'all got stuff that you hold on to and hiding. You think it makes you smart? I, I've asked. I've asked. I've, I'm up, it's the first time I'm gonna say it openly, and straight up, clearly on the tape. I've asked some believers. I've asked some believers uh, to help me. Farrakhan didn't have all the articles that Ahmad Muhammad wrote. I had every one of them that went up and smoked in a fire to somebody else's home. Some people got everything, and they do, they do me like this. Like you got something, you're supposed to give that up. Share it. If you knew all of it, it still don't make you better than nobody. I mean, look, this is not game time. Look how fast time is flying. Look how fast the last five years zipped by. Right, right, right. If you got those articles, let me have a copy of what you got. I got a couple of believers not helping me, and I give the minister as I get them. Help me get everything you got that you got in your stashes in your house that you're sitting on and not read. Clear now, huh? I was in a, a meeting with ministers earlier last year, and I, I, I was practically on my knees, man, begging. I just didn't decide to tell them it was for the minister. Because then you know what we're going to do, some of us? Well, we're going to do that for the minister. So I became a little small test. Do this for me. I'm checking to see. Nobody came in with nothing. Some believers who wasn't in the meeting came up. Hey, neighbors got to be away from that. God can't build no nation with right. niggas. That's right. Narrow-minded, selfish, so-and-so. No more for you. I'll tell you one thing. Get to know Minister Farrakhan. He's a broad minded man. If you have had personal contact yes, with him, yes, yes, you can tell a lot about watching his writing. Yes, he's a very broad minded yes, man and he's very liberal. I can say for a fact he's the most charitable person, male or female, in the entire nation. Yes, we give him a million dollars, he gives back three quarters or more. We give him and then we run up bills on him. We give him and then we run up trouble on him. This man is long suffering. 
I think I don't I don't know what his reward is. I hope that whenever it's time, he gets a chance to meet his leader and teacher. So I'm like, Mommy, I cannot imagine a greater blessing than him. So do you want that for him? Yes, sir. So we had a little test. God made our brother, allowed our brother to be down for his own wise reasons. And there's some big things that better accomplish that you don't know nothing about. So what if you don't know about it? How about you taking care of your business? Right. But a lot of us around the nation say, well, the con is laid up for a while. I'm going to lay up to I'm going to show deep sympathy for a minister by doing nothing. So some of us stop coming in certain cities. That's right. I'll come back when the con comes back. What the hell are you saying? You forgot what this is. This is the day of judgment. That's right. <laughs> Did you know that? Then the minister offered forgiveness to everybody in the nation. And I asked some believers, look, I asked one person in particular one day, I said, what if you could be convinced that the minister acted straight out of the mind and will of God and offered everybody forgiveness? Would, would you accept it? This person was nervous. I said, I, I don't know. I said, why? Well, I, I, ain't, I ain't perfect yet. I may mess up again. I said, even if you did mess up six months from now, weigh that as a guess what you got on your boat right now. We don't, he, look, you can't get the power of forgiveness unless you accept it. You see, well, I grew up and I didn't get hugged and then nobody loved me. Master Farah Muhammad's love is sufficient to make up for all and compensate for all the steps yes, you did not get. And you can see that through Elijah Muhammad and you can see that through Louis Farrakhan. Some of y'all call him my father. Some of us who are older, we may not have that exact same relationship, but I love the fact that I got a chance to talk to him. <laughs> It's part of what used me not to fix my brother's bow tie. You see my point right now? Yes, sir. Do you see what I'm saying, beloved? Yes, sir. Why do you want to wallow in yesterday? Because you you have accepted as part of your makeup the negative thinking of, who, of whoever or those who messed over you. You've accepted that as part of your thinking. That's what causes people to say, well, incest was in the beginning. And I raised the question, how do you know? How do you know how long that first man and woman lived? Hey, they... It was, I mean, the situation obviously was different back then, wasn't it? There was no sun. That made it a whole lot different, wasn't it? Huh? And when it began, it took two trillion years to get it from 78 down to 76 trillion years. Please, stop let's running our mouth about what we know nothing about. Which keeps you stuck on stupid for years. Okay? Is this stretching your brain a little small tennis? Now, this is the end of 66 trillion years. I can't be precise about when that is. You say 66 trillion year period and ending somewhere around in the time frame that we're in. So you put a big magnifying glass, if you can find one big enough, at the end of the 66 trillion years, and it opens up this, right? Huh? Now, this is not obviously, obviously, this is not drawn to scale because this 8,400 years here is larger than the 6,000 years. Right, right? So drawing the scale, you have to make it different. So now look, here's what I want to do now. Can we get this boy to erase this? Not going to get it. I can't do it now. Brother, can you erase this for me? I can't move this arm right now. So just erase this arm. I'll clean it off a bit later. I'm going to now take you to this. You saw that overview? Does it make you look at the history a little sharper? Yes, sir. Now, the concluding section that I want to get to is only 115. You tired? No, sir. No, you know why you're not tired? Sir. It's interesting. Yes, sir. Please, right. please. It was boring. Yes. Be scratching your head, head rolling to the side. <laughs> Isn't it interesting? Be careful how you judge brothers and sisters. When they first come in and afterwards, when I first come into the mosque, guess what I did? They put me on that side of the room. I was the only law I found out that night, and I went to sleep. I slept. They told me I slept two hours and 15 minutes. <laughs> to me, it was boring. I didn't come there to learn nothing. I came only because a friend, a, my friend, a, a brother named Marion, he agreed that he would go with me to the ballroom afterwards where we had a gig, making some money that night with the band. And that's what I, that was the trade. I came in with my knife. They took my knife from me at the front. I came in, I saw a red flag, I thought communist flag, I thought stupid, didn't even think in fact. Sat down and went to sleep. I don't remember the opening prayer, I don't remember nothing. The only thing I remember is, was a brother making announcements. 
And I can remember thinking, that nigga can't talk. That's exactly <laughs> what I thought. Brother, now, I met him later called James 2X. That's what I thought to myself at that time. Went on, not at all, groggy. He stood up, they said prayer. I just stood there. Nobody said nothing to me. Nobody offered me acceptance. Nothing. I guess they said, why? He hadn't slept the whole time. Nobody even woke me up. That's how I got my start in the nation of Islam. Be careful how you judge. That's the truth. That's not a make up nothing. Now, so let's start with this. Let's say this is 15, the year pocket, the year one. Let's call this 2000. Or it's 15,086. Okay? Got that so far? Yes, sir. Now, I, again, not, not the scale. Let's just say 8,400 years have passed. And here comes Yaku, 600 years later. Adam, all white folks, here they are. Musa, Esau, again, this is not the scale, Muhammad. Now, I got one more major area to try to cover, and I'm going to do a little bit of introduce you to it, stop for a few minutes, and come back and finish it. This section, I want to take you to the Bible and Quran. Let's develop a little better appreciation for these books, okay? Yes, sir. They're very practical, and when you stop to think over the wisdom, and I can't begin to scratch even the part that I know, what went into all of this wisdom, it makes you feel very, it makes you go, wow, do I love that much? How many times, let's face it, there's not that many of us in the house that, that come on a regular basis, right? right. right. How many black folks you got here in this city? Or in the whole area? Half a minute, yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Understanding what? Okay, I'm saying the year, this year right now, going back, let's say 1914. See, that's 86 years right there, okay? From 1914 to the year one, 15,000 years, okay? See, yeah, Adam, or the first white man, was born. Year 9,000. Got that? 9,000 is the year 1914. This is 6,000 years. See? 6,000 and 9,000 make 15,000 years. Is that clear now? I bet. Now, if it isn't, let me know. Come on, don't be shy. Let me know. Well, I only know that 8,400 years. See, 8,400, Yakub is born. Yes. 600 years later, devil is born. Okay? Got that so far? 2,000 more, Musa, 2,000 more, Esau, 1,400, not 1,400, 610 more years, Muhammad, yes, to go on. I'm, I'm going over it rapidly. I'm not being as detailed as we could be because of time, because what I'm trying to hurry us through. But the main point now is from the year one, <coughs> to the year 1914. 1914 now is, is reflective of the Gregorian calendar. But if we were going strictly by year one, 15,000 years later takes us to this time. Okay, 1914. 1914 going back 6,000 years takes us to the first white person. Oh my goodness, they began to be born. Now some, some parts of what we're given that's been generalizations, because for example, Yakub lived to be 150 years. But there were a certain amount of years that went by at first before they were actually exiled to the island of Pilon. Right? Remember the lesson that said this is actually very near correct? Remember, those are the answers that Muhammad gave in the 1930. He told myself and another brother in 1961, the month of May, in Phoenix, Arizona. And if he were to give answers to those same questions, now he could write books the size of encyclopedia. Thousand or more pages. Why isn't the devil said on the, the best part of the planet Earth? So he could easily produce a thousand or more page book from the answer he gave in contrast to one paragraph he gave when he was a baby. I went home two days later and pulled out my legal pad. And I tried to go as far as I could. I got up to two and a half pages and ran out of juice. I said, What did this man say? Now I see more now than it did in 1961. Is this clear so far? Yes, sir. And some of the 
Yes, sir. The year 1914 to, to the year 2086. You can declare now. 86 years ago was the year 1914. Is that right? Yes, sir. Sister, I still see a puzzle look on your face. Okay, it's clear now. Okay. Now, ready for a break just in a few more minutes. Go to the bathroom, whatever, because as we come back, we're not going to stop until we're done. Okay. Now, this part now, I want to deal with a couple of specific stuff you've already gone over. You already know it. But I just want to get you to think a little deeper into what you say you already know. you got to first remember, why were we even taught these things? It certainly doesn't alter your perspective, does it? And with the passage of time, Caucasians more and more and more come up with material that bears witness right. that the way they used to teach us was in fact a lie. Right. And they've got more and more accurate in certain areas, they look, they, but also they're more clever in how to hide stuff. Right. Okay. <clears throat> now, one, call the 23 in. 24. Another way of looking at that is 12 major and 12 minor. Or 11 and 1, being 12, plus 12. You see, 1 calls the 23 in, 12 major, 12 minor. 1 is over the other 11, plus the other 12. These are the men that you read about in Revelation chapters 4 and 5, the 24 elders. Hmm? Revelation chapter 4 and chapter 5. In chapter 4, they bow down cast their crowns at one who <coughs> takes power. He didn't always have it. He grew and matured to take the power. That one's Master for our Muhammad. <coughs> Chapter 5, Elijah Muhammad then enters the holy priest. He takes the book from the one sitting at the right hand of the one that took power to whom the 24 bowed. Got that? Yes, now, what's the importance of that? You and I got a brother right here in Chicago. Boy, it's fine, wherever he is right now. He's on his way one day, and he's qualifying by working feverishly to raise the dead, to carry out his assignment, to go to the one that took the book out of the one that was sitting on the throne to get his book, to come back at the appropriate time to take power in America. Louis Farrakhan is to take power. Yes, sir. Right. This is just, now, now, now. I, I, I want to get this tape. Last night on BET, I didn't catch it all. Ryan Robinson was on. A brother from, uh, from uh, Tulsa and an African brother, whose name I don't remember, who was the symbolic king of Togo in Africa. And it was an offer. He, want, he wants more and more Africans to offer black folks an apology. That's right. Ryan Robinson <coughs> came up with some powerful points, man. He jammed last night. He talked about what the Africans did hardly. I'm paraphrasing a film of the to white folks. And Randall got into, he had his facts, man. He was running his stuff about, what, about how rich we made white people. That's a fact. We made them rich. Your common sense tells you there's no way millions and millions of people will live on this earth and be robbed as we have robbed, worse than anybody else, not just of our tongue and this and that, knowledge of ourselves. Robbed of the very basis of self robbed of the ability to love ourselves. Which, of course, is at the root of the male female problems that we got. Right? Yes, yes, sir. And brothers can't get along with brothers and brothers want to ego trip on other brothers and the whole mess. All this is due to ignorance. Okay, yes, now, and, and evil. Now, think on this, my dear brothers and sisters. Now, why were we allowed to go all the way down to zero? Huh? As the minister was advising to the Jews, he said, look, not just what happened to you, but why did God permit it? Why were we allowed to go down this hill? Now, you got Shabazz 50,000 years ago. Look at that now. He saw us going under 50,000 years ago. The Honorable Muhammad did say some of the scientists, most of them saw 25,000 years ago. Every now and then there was some who saw 50, 
and even a rarer number every now and then to 100,000 years in space. Who would you met a man like that? You wouldn't even know you met him. Because he would hide all his Jews from you, so he wouldn't frighten you. <laughs> okay, now you got these 24 black men looking down the road. <coughs> Could they have stopped Yahoo from coming? Certainly. God never wills They see Yaqub coming. They also saw Master Farah Muhammad coming. They also saw the honor of Elijah Muhammad coming. Now here's the question, brother, I want to ask you. We are already at this point, 35,000 years down. Okay? Got that? And at the time these men are looking into the future, we're 35,000 years in the hole already. The jungles of East Asia down. Still going down. We were to fall as far as we could fall on our own. 49,000, roughly 500 years we fell on our own as low as we could go. And then the white man took us the other 500 years beneath which we couldn't take ourselves. Okay? Now, let me just go a little bit more and then stop. Here you have a distance, see, because as we keep going with this, we got to wind up getting a good view of this. This is right now. So I'm going to end today's meeting on now, go a little bit into now, and also pick up tomorrow, why far time, that's dealing with now. Okay? This now deals with yourself. Why him? Why you? Okay? Now. So we're already 35,000 years down as of this time. Now, to become tough, to become stronger, that man knew. Now, look, look, what do you mean he knew we were going to go into this? You're talking about this implies a decision, does it not? It implies a decision in the thinking of the top being. Let that thing that's coming be. Now, the scientists knew there was something in us that had not, never been given expression. These are the scientists 15,000 years ago who made the decision, let it be, it's time now. They see Master Farah Muhammad and Elijah Muhammad coming. They see Louis Farah coming. And I have to tell you, beloved brothers and sisters, they saw That's each right. of you coming. You don't think they can? You ain't dealing with no slouch. You say, could they see that deep yet? Yes, sir. Don't measure them by you. You go in there one day. You start when you eat one meal a day. That's how the scientists eat one meal a day and less. Scientists don't be eating three, four times a day unless they get ready to die. Right. Then they just eat themselves to make sure they're out of here. You see, it's like an easy, kind of like slow suicide. It's kind of like because food tastes good. Yes. <laughs> okay, and that's what they Now, was Yaqub inevitable? Yes. Master Farah Muhammad in that, in that Yes. Now, let's touch a few things here. The scientists saw that roughly in this 6,000 year period there'd be a vacuum. How do you spell vacuum? What's a vacuum? If a vacuum is a light bulb, right? Huh? Is it really a vacuum? It is and it isn't. This vacuum, let's say, for this setting here, implies that there's something in the first God. You could use the word running out. You ever see an, uh, an eight, an eight? Huh? Figure eight laying on the side? Sign of what? Infinity. infinity. What's that? What's the infinity? <laughs> What's infinity? Endless, what else? What else? Can't even figure, huh? Huh? How far back is 66 trillion, 78 trillion, and whatever it was before that when that first man got here? Out of here, you don't even know. Right? Now look, let's 
be careful when we use the words he created himself with imperfection. You know what I mean? He talks about I mean, how in the world can you get to the point where you're going to start measuring the first time? Not that too hard. No, I'm not. Grow some first before you start talking about a man that got the power to create himself. And it never has been another man like him since Master Brother. Until Master Brother. He's the first person with the same kind of wisdom as that first man with the power to get rid of everything. <clears throat> the first man came out of nothing. This man, Master Prophet Muhammad, can take this whole thing and here's the way how much Muhammad used it. He can cause it to waste away and leave nothing but himself <clears throat> and start the whole thing all over again. What does it say about Job? You read in your Bible that Jesus said, Pardon me, before Abraham was, I am? Yes, sir. You heard about this talk about pre-existent Christ. <coughs> Haven't you read about that? Yes, sir. Your theology stuff. Well, it's true. <coughs> the only problem is the way the Pauline letters are written, or the letters of Paul and others are written, they give you the idea that the man who walked around on the earth was once way back yonder with God in the beginning. concept so deep, I'm just going to say it, and then when we resume in a couple of minutes, I'm going to say it again, and I want you to get it clear, and if it's not clear, question me until we get it clear. We are right now sitting in, as it were, the beginning of the recreation of everything. It is as if we are back in the very beginning. The first man, the first woman, the beginning of everything. In Christian theology, they say, well, Father, Son, Holy Ghost, here in the beginning. The, the only problem with that is, bring it to right now. What the first woman was to the first man, so is Elijah Muhammad to Master Prophet Muhammad, his second son. Now here come these little babies coming at you. People who are accepting, coming out of nothingness. Do you see that? Your Bible talks and the Holy Quran talk about the recreation of the heavens and the earth, does it not? One day God will make all things new all over again. Does it say that? Yes, it's in the Bible and Quran. Both books, if you will just read it. Well, what will happen when that occurs? This you have to start spiritual. If you don't and you make it physical at the beginning, then you have to kill everybody. You can't instantly bring about a new universe without destroying all of us. We can't make a shift that fast. You can live up a mile high. I lived in Denver, Colorado for a short while. It's different than living in Phoenix 1,100 feet above sea level. It's different. You can live 7,000 feet up in, 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 in Mexico City, but it's different by having a nosebleed. You get what I'm talking about? That's just a short distance. Suppose you, how would you, suppose you, I mean, how are you going to work getting rid of this sun and putting in a new sun and getting rid of the planets and making new planets? How are you going to do all that without killing people? You got to do that gradually. The wise way to start is the way that it has been started with people. It starts with people, but you got descendants coming a long time from now who over time will make, replace everything you got now in the universe. But it starts with changing the minds of people right now Everybody else before you who had taken the time to write knew, didn't you? Yes, sir. 
What that impact did that have? It had the impact of developing your own power. The capacity was there yes, for you, because you already did it. Obviously, the capacity was there for you to read the literature and know their minds, and then sit on top of their minds, as it were, sit on their shoulders. Meaning you had a greater, greater capacity than all those other people who went before you. Are we so far? Yes, sir. Now, with that greater capacity, you wrote what you wrote, and you got your degree. This is an analogy now. Now, what does that tell us? That it tells us something about human beings. You were born with a greater capacity than those before you in that field. Maybe a lot of other fields, too, that you haven't even explored yet. Huh? You see my point? Yes, sir. It's not that they didn't have, didn't have that desire. They did, but they went as far as they could go. And we don't know how far they went because we're just being introduced to this. We don't know what black folks did, but we do know whatever they did. The Holy Quran says that Allah made, made civilizations that he wasted away. Far superior anything white folks got going right now. They can't even stop their traffic problem. <laughs> One day, the Almighty Muhammad said, there's a table, he said, brother, they will make transportation. He said, your people, our people, will produce transportation in the hereafter that won't won't crash, the airplanes won't fall out the sky and, and, and cars won't crash into one another. He says, not only that, we, we will be using the sun as the power, not coal and gas and anything crap, but you, you use the sun for power. That's another kind of thinking, isn't it? Right. right. I mean, you have an all look at the different kind of way of thinking about making money, huh? Huh? Real, a total reorganization of the mind, the attitudes, the priorities. In this world, you can't even imagine having an interesting movie or play unless there's conflict. They can say drama is a fancy word for fighting and killing one another. Right? You watch the soaps. You see two people hug each other. And when they get to the part where each can't see the other's face, you see meanness manifested. Hmm? On the soaps, you never see genuine friendship. Everybody is an enemy to everybody else. They are not capable of writing a peaceful play. That would become boring. That's right. The way they would write it, people wouldn't go to the movies. Can you imagine a play or a movie, two hours of love, peace, and unity, freedom, justice, and equality? <laughs> they don't know how to write nothing up like that. Huh? You see my point? <laughs> okay. Now, I want to stop on this note. I'm going to give you 15 minutes, beloved, and then come back. Five, ten. Come back at three minutes to the hour, and then we don't stop until we're done. Yes, sir. I'm going to cover the details on this, and then that's it. Thank you very much. Come back and have a seat. Three minutes to the hour, so I'm like, okay, we ready? So I'm like, now I want to. Um, So many other parts that I sat on the plane yesterday and wrote down about 30 points I wanted to cover. And I really don't know how many we have covered, but uh, in the time that we have left, we try to cover all that we can. And then if I can find where I put the note, I'll look at it and see if there's anything else we can run over right quick. Now,
all that's interconnected. Here's the point that I wish to make. Now, I guess I better take this off again. Now, this, I don't need the other one. I need, I'll take it. I, because this, this is the best we can do right now. Okay. Now, thank you very much. I need this. Now, my dear brothers and sisters, I'm not going to rush this. Again, I'm not going to, you know, I rush it. Um, something like this, you don't know what time it takes. You just go ahead and you just do yes, it. Sir. It takes whatever time it takes. Now, don't worry if you don't remember everything. Now, hopefully there will be a tape that comes out. Because some of this, I have to say concisely. Mm -hmm. Some of it, I'll just try to, try to raise a question and ask you to wrestle with it. Now, a vacuum. It was in this particular cycle of these world history writings, so we were taught, that the scientists decided, let this thing that they knew was in us be. You've already heard that by the time Yakub was born, the dissatisfaction among us was 70%, right? What world? were we dissatisfied with the degree dissatisfied with ourselves. Got that? Hmm? Clear? We already had Buddhism on the scene for a while. You can easily figure about how long that was. About 20,000 years. Got that? 15,000 years ago plus 20 makes 35. All right? So we already had that. You already had us living, how many, I don't know, in the jungles of East Asia. Right? With me? Yes, sir. And we were dissatisfied with ourselves. What else was there to be satisfied with? Mm -hmm. Okay, now. decided one of the, not, I can't say it the way I didn't hear it, but it's clear that a deciding factor in allowing Yaqub to be born was that his birth took place at the beginning of a point in our history when, quote, we wouldn't be doing much of anything anyway, close quote. The vacuum. Okay? Now, how long was this vacuum in the making? How far back? Could the vacuum have been that which was implied in the first God's self-creation? Why is infinity like that? Why isn't it just a circle? Why is it two circles connected together with one flowing and ending as it goes into the next? You ever thought about that? Why don't you just make a circle? Look, look, look what the Christians say about, or the white Christian scholars say about Jesus, A.D. and B.C. This man divides time. What time? Everything that ever was from everything that will ever be. Hmm? It just wasn't 2,000 years ago. It's now. It could not possibly have been 2,000 years ago. Best proof in the world, look at the history of Europe. Then look how these people did the first roughly 1,500 years, how they did, killing, slaughtering one another, clash with Islam, then roughly the last 500 years, subduing the planet, and actually fulfilling what is written in Revelation 20, that after a 1,000 years setback, Satan would be let loose. The Holy Quran says it too. Gog and Magog let loose for a little while. It fits them. Okay. Enough said on that. That's a lot going to right there, isn't it? Now, they saw this vacuum coming. Now, they see Master Prabhu Muhammad coming. Now, listen to this carefully. Forget your preconceived ideas. They saw all the way to the end of the cycle. They saw all the way to the end. They saw roughly 10,000 years beyond this period. However, have you ever looked into the future, maybe a couple of days, and you say, well, 
It's gonna go this way unless that happens. Hmm? You say, this is what I see. Now, this is another analogy to give you a picture. You're looking, you're driving down a highway, a country road, and there are no lights. Not too much moon. Moon, moon in fact, covered uh, with the clouds, with the cloud cover. So now it's dark. Okay? Got that? A dark country road. You're driving and you got your beams on high because you want to see. Here comes the car in the other direction. Now, if they got their brights on, that's going to nullify the length of the brightness of your lights. Right? It's going to cut it down. You see so far. But when a car is coming opposite to you, it cuts down how much you can see. It even have, if they have, if they have br bright lights, it even has the effect of somewhat blinding you. You see a little bit around the car. Clear so far? Yes, sir. Now that's not, that's only an analogy. But I'm trying to get across. They saw Master for Muhammad's coming. Well, was his coming inevitable? Well, you already had us now. 35,000 years down. Huh? With 50 more thousand years to fall. That implies something deep in the thinking of the gods. Doesn't it? Hmm? Does it? Yes, sir. If it, I mean, how far back was this decision to let us go all the way down to zero? At a certain point, the scientists knew that this power that was in us had to be given expression. So Buddhism came out and read its ugly head. It's the worship of every damn thing, a nail on a wall, doo-doo under your shoe, a microphone, a glass of water. Hindus worship everything, worship the microphone. Now. Here comes, remember now, the brothers and sisters in Africa. I was taught this by the Honorable Muhammad, and I also heard this from older brothers and sisters beyond the things that he, they said he told them. You had brothers back then that could deal with a line of 750 pound male, black main line charging you. They do 100 yards in six seconds. They own you. The, the white man has a, has, has a, has a, has a um, ad of a full-grown black man, black main line running. Some ad that he has on TV, some insurance company. It's a magnificent scene to see this line running. It's running. I mean, and moving fast. You could not outrun it. He's galloping. But when they, when they take out after you, they're frightening. I got some pictures. I hope I can find it somewhere. They hope they weren't destroyed. I've only seen this once in my life. I saw this with my own two eyes about five or six years ago. There's a zoo, not the main zoo, but there's a second zoo. It's kind of small. And it's a zoo where the keepers can go in and mingle with the animals. I mean, that's to me, is way out. I wouldn't do that, speaking for myself. They walk in there with these big tigers and panthers and whatnot. Well, I saw a male tiger. I saw this. I got pictures, but I don't know if I my hands on. There was a double wire here, and one here, and then another one, and then we were out here. And this, what, this Caucasian, two of them were in on this side, like this side. And I remember seeing this lioness rubbing up on this male tiger. And the other side was a male lion. And I have never seen anything in my, my personal life. I've seen elephants, but I've never seen an angry elephant except on TV. And TV is one thing, and up there, up there in reality is another. May I interrupt Dr. Arlene and Brother uh, Leonard, Chief of Staff. They were in Africa once, some years ago. And he, uh, Dr. Dr. Arlene was telling me how it looked to see these animals in the wild. And they look much more powerful. But there's nothing between you and them. It's a little different. Not the zoo. I don't know how that is. I don't have an experience.
I don't know what that's like. I, I can only imagine. But I saw this lion roar. I heard him roar and watched him. And the, the big, huge muscles, he was straining to get through on the other side. And that would have been a hell of a thing if there was no way to get through. The way that he had those fences, he couldn't. And I thought he was going to tear his claws off. And if, if, I mean, I can't get you to see the picture I'm looking at. If you can just imagine what I'm trying to get across. All the seven, eight hundred, six hundred pounds, whatever he was, trying to get through, he was angry. And I guess it was because of this lion that's rubbing up. This male tiger. I mean, I don't know. I mean, that's, what I, that's what I saw. Anger. But to look at that power, and then I fought back later. I took pictures. I fought back later. I said, damn, man. And I fought on what I heard in the 50s about a 150, 60, 70 pound brother with one spare man, a little jive to me, a little jive shield, standing with a lion coming at you. This is not another man maybe weighing 100 more pounds than you. This is straight death coming at you. Death and the death is angry. You see how carnivorous animals are? They always make noise like they don't like you as they begin tearing into you and eating you up. And I saw this and I said, my God, what were those brothers like? And I thought back on what we heard in the teaching about the power of our people. I have read books, maybe you have too, when we used to first intermix with them. We would get syphilis from them and it would, we would, our systems were so strong, despite all those thousands of years in that part of the world, living a jungle life, the syphilis would die out in us. Now, a person having a big knowledge of medicine can appreciate this more than I, who don't have that as a background. But imagine the system of the human body being that powerful. You just kill it. We're not that strong right now. What kind of people were we? Prior to 50,000 years ago, we must have been intellectual giants. That's how, that sounds like a weak word. Now, what I'm trying to drive at, brothers and sisters, here is this. This thing called the vacuum is something that was, you could say, in the in the nature of things ordained. Now look, the Almighty Muhammad said that what Yaqub was born to bring out of us was the last substance in us that had never been given expression, that had never been given outward manifestation. It was in us, it was affecting us, but it had never come out. And this man was born to bring out what had to come out. And he said, this had to come out of us before Master Farah Muhammad could build an eternal new world, absolutely free, not just from sin, but the power to sin, the ability to sin, the capacity, I should say, would be taken from us.
what Minister Farrakhan drinks now is so much better. Hmm? Okay, let's go back now. These scientists said, let it be. I put S for scientists. 8,400 years, we don't know what happened then. All we know is that as it came time for Yakub to be born, we began covering up everything we had. Whatever it was we had, we began covering it up, destroying it, putting it under the water. The sign. <laughs> then he's born. Now, when this man is born, he's born not just out of the 30%, but he's born with the greatest capacity of all the people in that 30% to bring about that change. Did you get that? Look, let me come another way. Minister Farrakhan is born. You, you've seen him. You've interacted with him. He's born with the greatest capacity than, than the rest of us. It doesn't make you inferior. It means that's his function. He's born with the greatest capacity to perform certain jobs that nobody else was born to perform. Elijah Muhammad before him, uh, they always say he was a frail man. That's a, that's a phony statement. Small in stature. Look, in the early 60s, he had a chip. One or two teeth, front teeth. And he told me how he got it. When he was a teenager, he used to pick up tables with his teeth. That's Elijah Muhammad. He had a tremendously strong body. Small man, but very strong. Now, I'm not telling you that to, just uh, on some silly notion. The point was, you could not go through. Those two men could not go through what they have gone through if they didn't have a tremendously strong constitution. That's the point that I'm making. Okay? Now, again, the other people can take this, what I'm saying, and go deeper into it and bring out what I don't have the knowledge of how to bring out. All right. He made the, the Caucasian. Now, let's go back here. Let's go back and talk about mother of A.K.A. Quran, right? Now, you know, these books have been written once every 25,000 years for a long time. Prior to that long time, they were written once every 35,000 years for a long time. Now, let's focus in on these books for a moment. Here you have this book. Now, now this is important. Imagine. Imagine. See the size of this book? Can you all see it? Imagine, let's just imagine 10,000 or 5,000 or 15,000 of these books. Hmm? Let's say these men wrote up all these books. They're, this one book, they all did the writing, but there are sections. Each section is designated for a certain individual not yet born. I hope I can make this clear the first girl. All right? Yes, I will. These 24 men, wise men, well, 23, one acts as the judge of the writing. I do not know how many pages these books take. This is a Bible. You've seen Bibles smaller than this, haven't you? They're all different sizes. What I want you to try to imagine for a moment is maybe five or 10,000 of these books. I don't know the size, but each book is written with a certain individual in mind that one of the descendants of the 12 major, 12 major, mine. These men are not going to live the whole 15,000 years. They're going to give birth to sons. Some son down the road, one of the 12 major, is going to take that book and reveal its contents to someone among the masses of the people. The one behind the veil is the God. The one in the public is the prophet. Got that? Yes, sir. Now, Yaqub is born. We know 
the majority of the Caucasians were sent into the caves. And there they lived for 2,000 years, right? A handful were not, we hid some, and later on they, they moved around and they intermarried and they moved around that part of the world. They went to what's today called Iran and whatnot. They lived around that part of the world. Clear so far? Yes, sir. Now, at the end of that 2,000 year period, Musa came to them. He was sent out from God's mercy and they did not give him all of the technology Yaqub taught them. Now, Master Muhammad said to us one day, he said, the Master Prophet Muhammad told him, if they had given to them all of it, you all today would be standing on your head. He said, they got us about like that already. So some of that knowledge, they never have been given. But they have gone in terms of exercising what they do know, they've exercised it to the maximum. So now they're put in a position where the technology they can't get their hands on can be used against them. Okay? So a few did not go in, and the majority in the caves. Once in the caves, got no action 2,000 years. Okay? The other ones went other places and they started making hell. You read, did you read, remember in the scripture where it says, the sons of God hooked up or married the daughters of men. Integration went down in some parts and God didn't like it and he killed them. And then how much Muhammad said he was told by the God that the chemical that was used you could buy in the drugstore if you knew what chemicals to buy and put them together and how to seed the clouds. They don't know that. Those people were, were destroyed. Now, someone from behind the veil revealed what was to be re revealed to Noah. Abraham, Lot, and the other prophets of God. These people were, were public figures. This is important for you to get this very clear. I can't fill up everything on the blackboard, but this is important. Listen to this. Remember, these wise men knew what the end was going to be. They knew that if, when Master Farah Muhammad came, if he didn't solve three problems that were in the process of being made, that there would be a war at the end of this particular cycle. But they saw him solving them. He would have to perfect the people, the language, and the guidance. That's in the process now. That's why our big brother says study. That, that's a key factor in our own personal perfection. Learning to use the language properly. Huh? It helps us with clear thinking, does it not? It helps us in many kinds of ways, doesn't it? It helps us in our interpersonal relationship, doesn't it? Yes, sir. And guidance. Learning how to carry a message perfectly to another person. Right now, we're not too good at that. You tell this person to give a message, by the time it gets around, the room is totally distorted. Right. It makes a problem, doesn't it? Hmm? Now, so in this 2,000 year period, there were some prophets who were communicated I should say, with whom one from behind the veil communicated. Now imagine this now. This is true, but think on it. Here you have descendants of these wise men who are 100% in tune with these 24, and they reveal what they reveal without screwing it up. They are in sync with the gods before them. Don't tell me black people can't generate unity. You saw a tip off in the Million Man March. Not one argument. Very, very difficult physical circumstances. But the brothers were so not hyped, so determined. Not one argument, almost two million men. And these men had never done that before. Never happened. Up all night long. And when it was time to disperse, guess what? We were quiet as we went off into the night. A miracle went down. But it's a hint about what's in black men. Sister, you may say now all them nigga men ain't nothing, but that's a hint, sister, about what's in these brothers. 
When we get our act together, we're going to be something else. That's right. That's right. If we didn't get past the stupid time. Okay? And we will. We're going to be forced. God got a way. He's not going to let Negroes defeat him. I don't know what you're thinking about. Oh, we can't get it together. That's what you think of a very ignorant level. You think Master Father Muhammad came to be defeated by Negroes? You out of your mind. Please. Now, here you got the prophets. Abraham, Noah, and some of their names are mentioned in the Holy Quran. They were given what they were given for them, for that time, and for that people. Some people accepted them, others rejected them, and then they all died. Now, why even bring up that? Because here it is. This is a picture, okay? Here you got the prophet. Friends and enemies. All of them become types. All of them become prophecies in their person. Got that? Yes, sir. Just remember it. Don't forget that I said it. Chew it up. In, a, in a, some other writings I've did, I have a lot of pages on that, but I, that's a lot to look at. Types. Type is a prophecy. You have, if you take time to study the Old Testament, you see where over here God tells a prophet such and such a thing, and he says it. And you keep on reading 8, 9, 10, 15 chapters, then you see it fulfilled over here, very naturally. And then you see where this person's life and those who reacted as friends or foes to him become signs. Sign is a very general word. Type is a more specific word. It has a scientific meaning, a big meaning, which we don't, we don't have time to go into. But that's one subject. Everything I'm covering so far, the areas where we can take all day with them. And one day we'll get ourselves together and we'll put all this material down and, 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 and fill it out. We can do that. If I don't do it, somebody else will. Now, <clears throat> okay, so you got this, 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 this number of prophets. Now, the ones, the Caucasians in the cave know nothing about this. The friends and the enemies of the prophet and the prophet himself become types or signs of what's going to be at the end. Now remember, the wise men reveal what they reveal to these very, or the descendants of them, to these various prophets. And they got in mind not only the times in which these great men are going to rise up, but they also have in mind, their minds the end. History repeats itself, right? Yes, Not exactly, but approximately. If you have a person, let's say, like, you get this picture. You have evil. People reach a certain level of evil. Okay? God reveals what he reveals to the best person qualified to, to teach that message and to be an example of it. People react one way or the other. Okay? They die together. Sometimes they get killed, put in prison, whatever happens, happens to them. Another generation, someplace else on the earth, same situation. The God, even though they're different men revealing over time, they're consistent and they are in unity. And the word is, is a unified word. And the intention in, in the revelation of it is the same. Evil is evil. Hear the word of God. You follow me? You have the same situation, roughly. There may be this people emphasizing that evil more than this, but you still have a certain low level of character. And the word of God is to uplift the people and get them out of that situation. The prophets are similar. The friends of the prophets are similar. The enemies of the prophets are similar. That's right. Gods are the same, though different individuals, but the same in their mind and motivation. Is that clear so far? Yes, yes sir. So all of this is piling up a picture. After Musa comes, then you have a majority of the prophets. A lot of them. Same situation, repeating itself again and again and again and again. Then Esau comes. He's the last of, of these kind of men. Okay? Now you have another man called Muhammad coming 610 years later. He gets the Holy Quran and does what he does. Now, let me stop back up to say this. All of the writings over here, these writings that are in the public, begin to be mutilated by the wicked who got the power. Got that? The wicked 
got the power, and they begin to mutilate, mess over the scripture, make it to suit their wicked purposes. Got that? Yes, sir. <clears throat> the wise men sitting back over here, thousands of years, now they're dead by this time, but sitting back over here, they perfectly anticipated the form that the Caucasians would put the book in called Bible. I want you to get that clear. They perfectly, now what they got in the vault is the righteous stuff. What's in the public is mutilated. But they perfectly anticipated what the Caucasians would do, and they knew the form the Bible would have even a few hundred years after Jesus' death. Got that? Yes, sir. They already knew that the Caucasian would write up New Testament. New Testament is a series of writings that give the impression that what was prophesied in the Old Testament was fulfilled prior to the time those writings were made. And they were written for the most part decades after Esau was dead. The wise gods back there anticipated that. Now, the last of the writings they did, called Kawan or Mother of the Book, the last writing is, is this book. Okay? This is the last of it. Got the picture? The Holy Kawan you got in your house, I don't care which translation. When they wrote what they wrote back then, the last of those writings was this book, which was part of a larger book. Is this clear? Yes, sir. It is? Yes, sir. I want to stop right here because I want to be sure because if you're not clear on this, you, you missed the rest of it. Is it clear? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. yes ma'am. I will. Glad. Hopefully clear. Now you had all these various prophets before and after Musa, ending with Esau. All of these men given a book, given knowledge. The origin of these texts is with the one behind the veil. Like you had a vision. Somebody, when you get a vision, if you see Master Farah Muhammad or Elijah Muhammad, that's not a dream, that's somebody putting something in your head. Okay? Yes, sir. What? Well, the veil. Somebody, Surah 43, I think, I'm not sure, talks about three broad ways that Allah communicates with people. He puts a thought in your mind, talk, talk. or he will, um, you don't even know it sometimes. Sometimes you do, sometimes you don't, because there's levels there. Or he will put you in a trance, put you in a state, or, or, you, or you're sleeping, and they will communicate with you. You don't have to do it himself. He can send an angel. Yeah, you got ways of handling that. Or the last way, he just comes to you straight up. Yeah, I am, you know. Elijah Muhammad got the greatest of all revelations. God came to him in person. Teach, man. Teach, man. And they looked at each other. Uh -huh. He recognized who he's looking at. You cannot be lightweight and handle that. That's deep. Very deep. And as the Almighty Muhammad told me, when you see me again, not if, when, if I didn't tell you, you would think, you would, you would think I'm the God. You got that there in Revelation. That's right. That's right, brother. First chapter. Now, and another place. Now, so, the men, the gods, one from among the twelve, communicates to someone in the public called prophets, messengers, warners. There are levels there too. Prophets, messengers, warners. Okay, they're different levels. To these people, what they get and what they write down is called scripture. After they're killed, or however they die, the wicked mess over the book. With the passage of time, they're accumulating books, all of which they're messing over, tampering with. Okay? Now, these wise men perfectly anticipated that wicked process. The last book they wrote in that material 15,000 some odd years ago is that book called Quran, and it tells you that it is part of a larger book. That larger book is safe and with us. <laughs> right? It's from, it's from then. It's from the larger book. Where's the larger book? Safe with them. Okay, yes sir? No. 
That's the. I'll come to that in a minute. Don't let me. I'll come to that in a minute. Okay. Now, is, are you clear so far? Is that clear, sister? So far. Okay. Now, here comes Quran revealed to Muhammad over a period of 23 years. Then he's dead. Now, the gods exercise power to keep this the way it is. If you examine this book, the Holy Quran, it perfectly answers the needs that arise from the reading of this thing called Bible, which is a compilation tampered with from what all the prophets taught. So you have bits and pieces, some of the prophets you know more about than others, the Caucasians just tampered with it. And now with these two books, in the hands of one who understands them, now Elijah Muhammad proves to understand them, he has now that which is the basis by which they rule. They didn't rule with the Holy Quran, but they rule with the Bible. They made everybody think they were divine people. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. We are the divinely, divinely chosen people. And they rule like that. Look, this thing called secularism is brand new. It's only a couple of hundred years old, right? right. The idea that there's no God is new. And the Caucasians invented that garbage just to further get done. It's another part of their bag of tricks. Any jackass can tell there's got to be a God somewhere. Right. Look, white people are chasing or trying to, what they call, unify the four fundamental forces of the laws of nature. Strong force, weak force, um, electromagnetic force, and gravity. Now, if you could arrive at the point of the origin of all these four forces, you are God. Hmm? Hmm? If you could get to the point to understand where these four forces come from, then you govern creation. You're the boss. White people do not use a mystical, nonsensical, unreasonable approach. They, they come as scientific as they can to deal with that. Right. You can't use spook stuff. Right. Now, they are approaching something superior to their own mind. So they have to keep getting deeper and wiser and heavier and smarter to get to that point. And when they get all the way there, you know what they're going to find? A black man. Now, I know I just did some jumping, but if we have more time, and I'm not going to take the time to do that now, but I'm raising this as a point for you to chew on. If we had, and if we took more time, we could tell you to take you logically step by step by step and prove that. They're going to run right into us. We certainly can say this, and you can see this right away. It takes intelligence to know how to form a ship and, and, and suit and whatnot and go up into space to the moon or something like that, right? You can't violate the laws of nature and do that. You got to be in a, learn them and be in agreement with the laws of nature to do that. You have to submit, get in tune with those laws to some extent to do that. Well, how much more do you have to be in tune to get to the point, they, they, they say, we want to unify these four forces. No, they want to unify them in their own minds. They already are unified. Creation is already going on. The laws of nature are already doing their thing. Yes, sir. Well, white people say the strong force. That's the force that holds the nucleus of the atom together. Are we not all made up of atoms? Yes, sir. So there you have a force right there. Spiritually, that force corresponds to the law of love. That's what binds people together. Hmm? The weak force has to do with decay. I'm not, I haven't fully gotten that together. Then you have the law of the electromagnetic forces. And then you have what's called gravity. Gravity keeps us on the floor. Yes, ma'am. It's connected. It's connected because these four forces on the physical side. Listen, now, go, go to Sirah 87. I, I won't take too much time with this, but the chapter called the Most High, yes, sir. it talks about four laws of nature, right? You ever see it? Four. These laws of nature emanate from the God's activity. I, I won't read this because it takes more time than I want to spend. Go home tonight, look up Sirah 87 in the Muhammad Ali translation. It's beautifully laid out there. And he says that the laws of nature grow from the acts of God. 
God acts, that's the law of nature. This is a simple way of putting it. Go and look at it. Will you look it up? Okay. Clear so far? Now you have four fundamental attributes of Allah, don't you? Is there a connection between the four attributes of Allah and these four fundamental forces? Certainly there is. There's nothing in creation that just operates by itself. It all emanates from one black man or another. Man, that's deep. Yeah, that's deep. All right. Now, here comes Bible. And Quran perfectly answers Bible. It contains qualifications that the Bible lacks about how to get into here after. Yes, ma'am. Yes, yes, yes. Clear? Anybody want to repeat what she said? That Master Farah Muhammad mastered these four forces. Does that make him perfect? And what else? No error. Yes, yes, yes. Sister, Elijah Muhammad said that Master Farah Muhammad came to him and already had written a book. Already had written a book for the guidance of a world that only existed in his head. That which no eye has seen, ear has not heard, nor has it ever entered the mind of anybody to conceive of what he had in his mind for the new world, and he determined to give that to one from among us. And the, and the other man on his way there is Louis Farrakhan. Is that clear? I'm not, this ain't no rah, rah, rah talk. This is real. Yes, sir. Yes. <clears throat> Those men were perfect in their time. They were the most perfect person to carry out the will of God for the people on the level those people were in at that time. You can't come to date in this so-called modern world with technology and whatnot unless you are teaching in gulfs or, or, or I would say, you know, not subsumed. answers the questions that arise in a scientifically trained mind. That's why you don't really have to argue with nobody. You don't have to. Just listen to them. Study what you got deep enough. I don't care what the person is, who they are. You, you got what they got. You know, if you study what you got, I intend to touch some places. There are about at least 36 places in the Holy Quran where Allah says he sent this or that or the other prophet with clear arguments. I mean, look at this. Allah took the time to construct arguments. Not just saying believe it because we say it. There are clear arguments, reasonable arguments, why this is true. And you have nothing left to come with to defeat this. Page 61 through 74 is a beautiful example, and I'll say if you have the right. Use math, you like how many use mathematics, human nature, general science, and 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 and, and what you call theology, to argue his case about God. What's left? What are you going to grab a hold to to disprove him? If a man used mathematics and science and, your, and the nature of the human being, plus your book, your scripture, what do you have left to draw from the fighting with? Elijah Muhammad comes and says, look, if you worship less than man for God, then you're worshiping less than yourself. You can't get around that. That's like things equal to the same things are equal to each other. You can't argue that. All you can do is say, mm -hmm. <laughs> follow me? You can argue, but you make yourself a fool. And this book says, who is one who will, you know, in words, turn back from Islam except one who makes a fool of himself? You can't turn this teaching down by not manifesting your and myself as a fool. And a fool, not just in the general sense, but Proverbs, Psalms especially says, the fool has said in his heart there is no God. It means in the other language, a stubborn, obtuse thinker, a stubborn person. You refuse to acknowledge one of one is two. You don't want to see it. Yes, sir. <laughs> so the reasoning process of a disbeliever is such where they reason in such a way that's going to propel them in the wrong direction. Okay? 
Don't jump off that roof, man. You're gonna die. No, I won't. It's only one story down. Brother, please, man, turn around and just take a look. You gonna see it's 90 stories down. No, it's one story down. You wrong. Then you jump. And as you're going down, you holler. And the hollering represents a desire to reverse the situation. <laughs> <coughs> now, this Holy Quran, beautiful book. Have you read the Holy Quran? All of the Muslim scholars, their scholarship team is big time. It's really very almost listen. You know, I mean, I know I don't know where this tape is gonna go, but a lot of that scholarship is in the dust. They want to focus on Muhammad, that's great, focus on this and that. But they admit, and some of the wiser ones, scholars admit, that, or know rather, 